TLC's 90 Day Fiancé has introduced us to dozens of couples over the years, but fans who haven't been keeping tabs on the whereabouts of the show's cast may be surprised to learn what the celebs have been up to since appearing on the show. From competitive bodybuilding to American Idol, these 90 Day stars have been busier than ever. The short but turbulent marriage and divorce of Muhammad and Danielle was well documented on season two of the show. He has told people that I smell and I do. peed on him. <gasps> okay. After their appearance, Danielle attempted to cash in on her fame by selling autographed photos of herself in addition to revealing her plans to go to nursing school. She posted on Instagram in late 2018, "...all autographs will be out by Monday, December 17th. I have been working on them between my jobs and school." She also began selling t-shirts and mugs featuring some of her infamous 90 Day Fiancé phrases and shared a photo of herself wearing a t-shirt that read, "...I'm going to guarantee I'll get your ass deported." Of course, that came from a particularly heated moment on the show. "...I am going to guarantee I will get your ass deported because you're a user!" Meanwhile, Danielle told In Touch in May 2019 that she had a new man in her life. She revealed a few details about her boyfriend, saying, he had reached out to me and Muhammad both during our first season of 90 Day Fiancé. We stayed in contact after me and Muhammad split. He was there for me and my kids after Muhammad left. But it looks like Muhammad has since been in touch with his ex again. Danielle told In Touch he reached out to her in April 2020. As to why exactly, she guesses. I think it's because time has went on and he realizes too that we'll always be connected because of our situation. Since his messy split from Danielle, Muhammad went on to produce motivational videos that he posted on his YouTube channel. His first vlog popped up in late 2017, and his last video, a travel vlog, was posted in October 2018. A year later, Muhammad apparently had a new job on the horizon as a long-haul trucker. He wrote on Instagram, "...me and my friend are about to become homeless soon. Not that we have no place to stay, but we choose to go after big money, so we're gonna give up on everything and be on the road driving an 18-wheeler and help America transport food and other important things to stay great." I feel excited for, about that, and uh, hopefully things go well. Viewers watched Luis and Molly's doomed romance play out in the sixth season of the show, and fans cringed as the pair quickly crashed and burned, and ultimately went their separate ways. "...you can take your little ring and do whatever you want to do with it, and pack your bags and get out of my house." Since then, Molly revealed in an Instagram post that she was revisiting some old musical ambitions she had let fall by the wayside before turning her attention to her lingerie business. She told her followers on Instagram Live, my brother and I are going to get back in the studio. We've got some surprises coming for you guys. For anybody that doesn't know, before I did bras, I was in school for music. So it's been missing. It's kind of part of rediscovering myself." She followed that up with a pic of herself and her brother heading into a recording studio. She wrote, "...just wait until these cats come with a banger. Stay tuned, studio sessions in full effect." In December 2019, Molly received an invite to appear on Jimmy Kimmel Live, where she was interviewed by 90 Day Fiancé superfan and guest host Brie Larson. "...you're blaming an owl with a candle on the fact that you are an <laughs> to my kids." Chelsea married Nicaraguan boy band singer Ymir on season two of the show, with their marriage coming to an end by 2016. While Ymir is apparently still pursuing his music career, Chelsea has made some big changes in her life. According to her Instagram, Chelsea's now living in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and has embraced a variety of ventures, one of which appears to be within the state's legal cannabis industry. She's also opened her own business, Moon Hollow Mercantile, selling, quote, "...mystical goods for magical beings." In addition to all of that, Chelsea came out as openly bi. In an interview with the Coming Out Sessions, she discussed her marriage to Ymir, explaining of their five-year relationship. There was something that just didn't feel right. And it wasn't him, and it was nothing he had done, it was something inside of me." According to her Insta, she has since found a different man, Daniel, and the two seem very happy together. Anfisa and George were first seen in the fourth season of 90 Day Fiancé. "...if he proposed to me with some cheap ring, I think I'm not gonna marry him." But things didn't go as planned for George after the couple's time on the show. As People magazine reported, George was pulled over by police in 2018 and arrested for possessing nearly 300 pounds of marijuana, leading him to be convicted of a Class 4 felony and sentenced to two and a half years in federal prison. "...being incarcerated is really hard, especially if you don't have any type of outside support." 
But if there were ever a silver lining to the situation, it's that his stint in the Slammer led George to lose a whopping 125 pounds, he told E! News. I'm glad that people are noticing some positivity out of such a negative outcome. Hopefully, people can see that I am able to turn things around even though I am at the lowest point in my life. In the midst of George's legal problems, Moscow-born beauty Anfisa went on to become a 90 Day Fiancé fan favorite, with an Instagram account that boasts nearly 700,000 followers. Anfisa also embraced a new passion in her life, competitive bodybuilding. As she explained in a since-deleted Instagram post, she began working out to, quote, fill the void after George's sentencing. I want people to recognize me on the streets, and I want to see my face on billboard. In June 2019, she competed in her first-ever bodybuilding competition, taking second place in the novice category and fifth in the open standings at the NPC West Coast Classic Bikini Competition. After sharing the news on Instagram, she also posted a video of her routine, writing, "...stayed up until 5 a.m. re-watching videos from last night and reading your comments, so overwhelmed with joy and excitement. Woke up thinking I slept a long time, but it's only 7.40 a.m., so here's my solo posing from the finals. A little rushed, as I was nervous." While it's not uncommon to see 90 Day Fiancé stars appear on one or more of the show's numerous spin-offs, it is unusual to see them pop up on TV talent competitions. And that is exactly what happened with Evelyn, who first appeared on season 5 alongside her then-fiancé and current husband, David. If this is about the tuxedos, I'm gonna have a heart attack. Evelyn had made no secret of the fact that she was a talented singer, sharing songs with her followers on social media. In 2019, The Washington Post reported that her musical ambitions led her to audition for American Idol, where she impressed the judges enough to earn a golden ticket to the Hollywood rounds. She even made it to the top 20. Literally one of my favorite voices I've ever heard in my life. Not only did she earn the seal of approval from Judge Katy Perry, Evelyn continued on her musical career path, recording several singles that are available on Spotify and other streaming services. Noon appeared with her fiancé Kyle on season 3 of 90 Day Fiancé, and the pair went on to get married. Then in 2019, the duo took to social media to urge their followers to vote for them in a radio station contest to name Portland, Oregon's cutest couple. I'll always be there for you, you know that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you were stuck with me. <laughs> Alas, Kyle and Noon didn't win the contest, but there's no denying these fan favorites are indeed adorable. What's also cute is Noon's YouTube channel, titled It's Noon All Day. Her content is nothing if not eclectic, featuring videos that include a demonstration of how she talks to her cat. Hi. Wow. Footage of the couple's road trip to Vancouver and another video of the pair chilling in their boho-style bedroom. The two have also listed their services on Cameo, where they'll leave anyone a personalized video message. For a price, of course. If you want a shout-out, just let us know. It's no secret that couples' experiences on the show are all over the map, but season 3 duo Mark and Nikki were so dissatisfied that he sued TLC's parent company, Discovery Communications, in 2016. She could be your daughter. She probably could be my granddaughter. I feel like you should have problems with that. In the lawsuit, Mark, who was 58 years old when he brought his 19-year-old bride-to-be from the Philippines, alleged the show deliberately painted him in a negative light per cheat sheet. Court docs stated, Mark and Nikki were misled into believing that the show was a documentary or a docu-series, that it was not scripted, that they would not have to promise anything, or that they would not be forced to do or say anything. <laughs> you're making trouble. Do you want me to be happy, Nikki? Did you want Nikki, you're messing with N Nikki, you're messing with my happiness. Uh, I Once the show aired, however, the couple felt much differently. The statement continued. Mark and Nikki realized that Discovery Communications fraudulently misrepresented their roles in the show and improperly altered footage to cause the destruction of their reputation. In 2017, the suit was tossed out of court with the judge citing one simple fact. They had signed a release. Case dismissed. Viewers of 90 Day Fiancé first saw Alan and Kirlam during the show's first season in 2014, after the couple met when he was on a Mormon mission in her hometown in Brazil. When she opened that door, I was kind of like… Hello. <laughs> the duo later returned to TV in 2017, but this time on The Price is Right. Alan even made it to Contestants Row, where he saw success from the start when his first bid was a winner. He then went on to win the Showcase Showdown, taking home a trip for two to Fiji and a red Mazda MX-5 Miata convertible, a prize package valued at nearly $35,000, according to Starcasm. Alan posted on Instagram, 
I have always been a huge The Price is Right fan. I loved watching it with Bob Barker and continued to love it with Drew Carey. It was one of the most fun experiences of my life. I would have been happy just to have been called to come on down, but to actually win the showcase showdown was an absolute dream. Jason and Cassia were introduced to 90 Day Fiancé viewers in the show's second season. He does okay, but he doesn't throw money in the air. Sadly, the couple's drama-filled relationship ended in a split, with Jason confirming to Radar Online in 2018 that their divorce had been finalized. While In Touch Weekly later reported that Cassia had a new man in her life, Jason went on to apparently land a gig relating to his reality TV experience. In a Facebook post in March 2019, he reached out to anyone in a, quote, broken relationship and families who need help, offering the services of a parenting expert who would come to your house and help. He shared a contact email affiliated with KT Studios, which has developed shows like The Real and Jersey Shore. Narkia and Lowo appeared in the fourth season of the show, and fans quickly realized Lowo was prone to some outrageous fibbing, which included telling Narkia that he was a Nigerian prince and claiming that the mother of his son was dead when she definitely wasn't. All that said, some viewers might be surprised to learn that the two were still married as of 2019, three years after their rocky romance played out on the show. These days, Narkia is the owner of Low Key Custom Rentals, LLC, which rents furniture and other items for weddings, parties, and various events. She explained her hopes and dreams for the brand, writing on her company profile. Our mission is to make our customers' most important events become extraordinary. This business was started in December of 2016 after unsuccessfully looking for rental items to make my wedding and reception extraordinary. Brett and Daya were featured on season two of 90 Day Fiancé back in 2014, ultimately getting married and welcoming a daughter in July 2017. It's not perfect, and it's never gonna be perfect. The couple channeled their experiences navigating the 90-day K-1 visa process into a new venture, their own podcast titled The K-1 Experience. According to the podcast description, the couple explains, Brett Otto shares what life is like with his wife, Daya, who moved to America all the way from the Philippines just to be with him. Providing updates on the family and talking to others who have been through their own K-1 experience, the podcast aims to show different perspectives of what it's like to marry someone from another country. In October 2019, the last episode of the podcast was released as Brett, quote, decided to pivot and focus his efforts on another podcast. He went on to produce the Tip Touch podcast, which of course also featured his wife. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite reality show celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.